Anoop, Cisco plays a key role in the blockchain ecosystem. Yep. Why did you decide to enter this space, and what's your strategy? Well, when we looked at the technology four years ago, and when we started, we said, well, there's a really interesting thing that's happening. This is a technology that is inherently a networking technology. Right? Anytime anyone discusses blockchain, they always talk about it in the context of a network. The challenge has always been that the software that's been built in blockchain is running at this application layer, separate and removed from the actual infrastructure and the network itself. So part of our vision and part of what we're actually executing on now is taking software, the blockchain software technology and starting to integrate it and embed it with the infrastructure so that you have a continuously available, continuously on, trusted execution environment for all transactions. And for you, Arminio, why did HERE decide to explore blockchain and its applications? Well, blockchain, not only with, is known, well, the, the best use case is known for cryptocurrency, but if you think about other B2B enterprise use cases, transport and logistics, one of where we see most of the evidence of blockchain coming up. And in such a model of trusted transactions, location in transport and logistics is very key for as an additional information that generates an even more trusted transaction. And it brings visibility, brings validation to, to the uh, end-to-end the -end solution. And that's the reason why we thought that we have an ingredient that for the recipe of the solution that can, uh, can be enabled by blockchain. That's why it's a very compelling and interesting solution for us. Excellent. So my next question is for the both of you. Just describe a little bit more about our collaboration and specifically how Cisco and HERE intend to transform the supply chain management and logistics. You want to go first? Sure. That's what I, exactly I was referring to. So when you think about end-to-end uh, -end supply chain in transport and logistics, there is a lot of transactions happening from handing, leaving the factory, loaded on the truck, on the road, arriving, a lot of those things are normally done manually by the carriers and the shippers and the suppliers. And blockchain, by definition, provides, with this methodology, provides a trusted transaction. Now, if you think about adding also location to where this transaction exactly happened, think for, use the, the methodology that is, for us, uh, the, the bread and butter, like geofencing. So when I know exactly that the certain parcel left the factory, I do not only know that, that things really happened, but I also know that it happened in that specific time and in that specific location. This helps to bring more secure and, and a more transparent transaction when the things are handed over by the different carriers, shippers, and actors of an end-to-end -end supply chain transaction. Yeah, I mean, when we started looking at this, we said, um, and, and particularly the collaboration with here is, there's an opportunity around trusted transactions where you have a use case around proof of, proof of proximity and proof of location, right? Uh, we register assets, we register digital assets, physical assets, but there's always a location component to it, right? Whether it's an indoor location or an outdoor location or an object or an asset that has moved from indoor to outdoor location. And then there's a volume of transactions that are initiated as a result of a transition of moving from one location to another location. So location is a critical, critical component, but, he, but, he, but being able to actually ensure that you have trusted data that you're going to make location-based decisions on is critically important, right? And, and leveraging the high-fidelity data that we kind of get access to and capability from here and leveraging you know, this, this, the complete end-to-end -end trusted and, and secure execution environment that we would want to run business applications in becomes a very compelling story. Fantastic. Thank you both. Well, at this time, we'd love to engage you, the audience. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to step up or raise your hand and ask. While you guys wait and formulate your questions, oh, sir. So I'd like you to prioritize the different industry segments or sectors or verticals that you think uh, merit priority uh, in terms of applying blockchain uh, technology. So 
there's, there's no, no shortage of use cases in, that are being explored in, in blockchain. I would say the one, the industries that are probably going to reap the most benefit in the near term is definitely supply chain, right? Anything around logistics. The next is definitely going to, I, my gut is telling me healthcare, right? Uh, where you have proof of provenance of not only drugs, but workflow around those drugs and, and the movement of those drugs as, as they go from across the ecosystem. Uh, and certainly finance. Uh, there's a lot of work that's been happening in finance the last five, six years. Uh, the ecosystem is very different in finance than in healthcare or supply chain logistics. And so uh, that's going to, there, there's some complexity there. Uh, but that is going to be an area that is going to be significant. And we're also seeing opportunities in the areas of defense, defense agencies that are looking at how do they get to know the entire posture of their network and the entire ecosystem that goes around their network at a moment's notice. And being able to have that information and, and that quality of data so that the efficacy of any decisions that they want to make is very high. Thank you. Are there any other questions from the audience? Well, I've got a follow-up question for you, sure. Newt. You know, you just described the prioritization of segments and markets. How does Cisco differentiate, say, differentiate itself in terms of the applications or your overall approach uh, to your customers when it comes to blockchain? So we, we don't see ourselves necessarily focusing on applications. We want to be an enabler of a horizontal technology that can be applied across a multitude of segments, a multitude of markets. What we've been doing in the last four years uh, and interviewing hundreds upon hundreds of customers is focusing on a couple of key areas that have yet to be really, really solved well in the blockchain space. So we're spending a lot of time on privacy and confidentiality. Right, uh, We are focused on enterprise permissioned blockchain solutions um, that could actually find its way into the public domain at a certain point. Uh, but we're looking at permission systems. And so how do you, one of the biggest barriers to adoption across an ecosystem is how do you ensure that you maintain confidentiality of data or contracts or assets as they move across the ecosystem? Right? So how do you do that in a blockchain environment where everything is openly shared? Well, there's some nuances that you can actually put in place that allows you to enforce confidentiality, almost like a network policy, and have that executed across you know, an entire global network. And that's what we've done in our own uh, blockchain uh, use case and pilot, where we've actually deployed the technology across our supply chain ecosystem, and we're actually validating uh, some of these differentiators, along, uh, along with creating best practices on how do you actually operationalize planet-scaled blockchain solutions. And are there any other questions from the audience? To Arminio, in terms of scale, obviously as a global map provider and Cisco being a, a large global company in itself, when it comes to tracking and positioning, Right in the near term, how do you see the evolution of blockchain being implemented within that sector? Well, as I said, it's what we see the most emerging use case of blockchain outside uh, cryptocurrency is in, in, uh, in transport and logistics. An initiative like the one that Cisco is having, which is the only one, so the giants that control the digital transactions in an horizontal way like I just been described, it means that this is really going to become a reality in the very short term. So we have expectation that this is very, uh, probably very likely to happen before, because it also does not require a big community. It requires a private community of our actors, which are handing over objects, and that can be an asset, a parcel, a container. And this is where blockchain fits very well, because it gives the, really the trusted transaction enhanced with location so that you can, uh, there is a lot of benefit because take an example, when a transaction has been secured and handed over from the shipper to the, to, uh, to the receiver, 
then you don't need to pick up a phone and call somebody else to say the parcel arrived. There is an automatic transaction, an invoice can be delivered. There is an immediate effectiveness of such a solution being implemented. So that's why we strongly believe that this is not just us, but we see evidence, one of the first use cases that we will see very shortly happening. Fantastic. One more question. Is there anything from the audience? If not, love just to end on this note, which is where do you see the collaboration going forward when it comes to here in Cisco? So I'm seeing opportunities in transportation. Um, part of my day job, actually more like my night job, is I'm the chairman of the Trusted IT Alliance. And it's one of the only uh, industry consortiums that is specifically focused at the intersection of blockchain and IoT. And we're f what we found was that whenever you're talking about IoT, you need to have location. You need to be, that's it's a critical component of an identifier for an object. And not just latitude, longitude, you need altitude as well. So, you know, free space location is very important. Uh, and so we're looking at applications across a variety of different segments that require this kind of capability. What's interesting is that the solutions out there are few and far between. So there's a significant opportunity to collaborate joint forces and actually create and define best practices around location and blockchain. It's an excellent way to end. Please join me in thanking both Anoop and Arminio for their time.